Here's my favorite Steam Deck accessory. So this is the next dock 360 and while on the surface, it looks like any old Windows Ultrabook, it's actually a lot cooler than that. The best way I can describe it is if you took a Windows Ultrabook and removed everything except the screen, trackpad, battery, keyboard, speakers, and IO. Now I'm gonna be real, I've spent way more time using this thing than I have researching its history, but basically as far as I can tell, it was dreamed up to be a perfect accessory for a Samsung phone because they have that DeX software where if you plug your Samsung phone into a docking station and connect to keyboard, mouse, and monitor, it turns Android, or their flavor of Android, into a pseudo Windows style desktop. But if you take one quick look at the Next Dock website, they've clearly expanded beyond the Samsung phone focus that they had when this thing launched, because they also feature stuff like Raspberry Pi computers, Windows USB sticks that are basically running Windows to go, PS4s, Nintendo Switches, pretty much any device you can think of that has a USB-C port and display output. Now I've worked in the tech video industry of YouTube for like seven years now, so I've definitely seen this thing around, but when the Steam Deck was announced last summer, I didn't immediately think of it. And then when I was doing a Steam Deck accessories video and I had my keyboard, my wireless mouse, my monitor, all these different things that I was throwing into my bag, I was sitting there like, man, it would be really cool if there was a laptop that took out the most expensive parts, you know, the RAM, the CPU, the GPU, all the stuff that runs the actual computer, and then it could be the ultimate portable docking station for the Steam Deck. And then I was like, wait, I think I've seen one of these before and I was reconnecting connected with this device. Guys, I'm cutting in real quick with two things. First of all, thank you so much for getting this channel over 15,000 subscribers. I've started a few YouTube channels over the years and I have never gotten one over 10,000 subscribers as fast as this one. So thank you. And also thanks for getting the deck ready Twitter to 400 followers. That was crazy how fast that happened as well. If you're not following it already and you wanna see what games I'm playing, you want some latest Steam Deck news and my opinions on it, I have it linked down in the description. It's stay deck ready. So yeah, I think that about covering it, let's jump back into the video. As far as the hardware itself goes, I was left really impressed with it. Like out of the box, this thing feels premium. The chassis is pretty much all aluminum. It feels nice and cool to the touch. Very well constructed all around. And if you've ever used something like a Razer Blade 14, an Asus G14 or a Lenovo Legion, those are three that I've actually like put my hands on before. It feels like it's in that realm. When I plug my Steam Deck into this thing for the first time, the thing that really stood out to me was the screen. It's a 1080p IPS panel that's also a touch screen. And the touch aspect of it works in desktop mode on the Steam Deck. I honestly haven't tried it in game mode because when I'm in game mode, I'm using the controller on the Steam Deck, but I did test the keyboard's arrow keys and those work just as well, which is great. The screen is bright. The color reproduction looks good to my eye, which I guess is important because I'm the one using this thing. And I was just guys, as a Windows user, I was blown away that just plugging the Steam Deck in, it worked right out of the box. No drivers, no extra installs. The screen was the right resolution. The brightness was set at the perfect brightness. The keyboard just worked. The trackpad just worked. The only thing I actually ended up having to change was the orientation of the monitors, like the Steam Deck monitor and the Next Dock monitor, which, you know, makes sense. I don't understand how they could even figure out how to do that automatically. So it's not even a point of criticism in my mind. I keep the Steam Deck on a little stand as one monitor. And then I made the Next Dock monitor my primary one. And the Steam Deck remembers that. So now when I plug in the Steam Deck, it automatically puts the task bar at the bottom of the next dock screen. And when I open up apps, they show up on that screen. I mentioned that I've had this thing for a couple of weeks now, and it actually showed up the same day my Steam Deck came back from being RMA at Valve. And I've been using it every day since then. And it was really perfect timing to get my hands on a device like this, because when you send your Steam Deck into Valve, they don't fix it. They just send you a brand new one. And then I ended up buying a one terabyte SSD and putting that in the device as well. So anyway, you slice it. I was starting out with a brand new, totally fresh Steam Deck. And that's when I realized I should have backed up all my ROMs because I spent a ton of time downloading a lot of PS2 games. I had the subsistence version of Metal Gear Solid 2, which is the biggest ISO I've ever downloaded. I had PSP games like Crisis Core, Final Fantasy 7. I had the God of War PSP games. I had Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. I had Metal Gear Solid 3 Substance, uh, Silent Hill 2 and 3. The point is I had a ton of PS2 games. And then on top of that, I also 
also had Final Fantasy VII Remake in the Heroic Store. I had Alan Wake Remastered also in the Heroic Store. Tons and tons of big apps that I had to set up. And the first time I did that on my original Steam Deck, the one that broke, I did it all with the trackpads and it was a nightmare. Even dragging stuff from window to window, you have to start on the farthest edge of that right trackpad and drag your thumb all the way across while leaving just a little bit of skin on it so it doesn't deregister the fact that you're clicking and dragging. When I had this next dock, it made the entire process so simple from start to finish. Having the keyboard and mouse in desktop mode is really as good as it gets, but the cool factor here was I was able to do all this just sitting in the deck chairs outside my apartment. I loved it. I was sitting in the sun, I had a beer on the right side of the chair, and I was just setting up all of my emulators, getting everything working while I was downloading Steam games, and I even wrote the script for this video on the next dock 360. And because you don't have a CPU, GPU, RAM, or I think even a fan, there's just space between the keyboard and the bottom of the device. So the keys themselves have similar, if not the same travel to a full on desktop keyboard, which does not go unnoticed. Like when I go back to my Razer Blade, I used to think that the travel was good on that computer. And now I'm like, man, I love that next dock 360 keyboard because also the keys are so big. They feel like full size keys. The trackpad also has some really deep click to it. The only issue I had with the trackpad is it's not as accurate as what I'm used to on the Razer Blade or my MacBook Pro that I use to edit for work. It's uh, it's almost there. I'll say it's almost there. I'd say about 75%, but if they do a new hardware revision, I would like to see them use a better trackpad. So since you're connecting a dedicated gaming device to this 1080p monitor, I think the first question a lot of people are going to have is can you game on the next dock 360? If you stick to lighter games like Hades, Blasphemous, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, Hollow Knight, I feel like you'll be just fine running those at 1080p. You might have to bump them down to 720p, but again, this is a pretty small screen, so I don't think it would look that bad. I didn't really mess around with AAA stuff, but I'm pretty sure something like Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein The New Order, you know, those older AAA games or really well optimized AAA games, I think you could probably run them on here, but for me personally, I don't need that from the Steam Deck. I like gaming on the actual device. Where this thing really comes in handy for me is as a laptop replacement. I mentioned that I do most of my work on a MacBook Pro that's a 16 inch with the M1 processor. I love that for video editing, but for everything else, I use my Razer Blade 14 and carrying around two full size laptops in my backpack was getting a little bit cumbersome. So now I have this super thin Next Dock 360 in my Steam Deck along with my MacBook and it is about the amount of weight I can carry. And it's basically like the perfect combination of stuff to fit in my backpack when you include the Steam Deck stand I use and my AirPods Max, which I use when I'm playing on the Steam Deck and I don't wanna hear everything around me. And like I touched on for a minute earlier, doing stuff like writing video scripts, watching YouTube videos, moving around files that are hard to do with the touch pads or using this new app I found called Cider, which is basically a visual interface for the online version of Apple Music because I'm an Apple Music guy. That's where this thing really came in handy. And honestly, the speakers aren't anything to write home about. I think honestly, the Steam Deck speakers are better, but that's just because the Steam Deck speakers are so good. So when I was using this thing, I was rocking with the headphone port for the most part, but speakers are another area along with the trackpad where I feel like there's room to improve. As much as it hurts me inside to say it because I love using this thing so much, there is one very noticeable drawback on the next Dock 360. Honestly, it's the only thing holding it back from being perfect in my eyes, and that's that the USB port doesn't output 45 watts. So if you plug your Steam Deck into this device, it lets you know immediately that you have a slow charger plugged in and it's not going to charge the device while you're using it. And unfortunately, if you use your Steam Deck while it's plugged into the next dock, even though it's drawing power from the next dock's battery, you'll see the battery start to go down. Now, thankfully for what I'm doing, which is mostly work stuff, it's not drawing battery from the Steam Deck really at all. If you've ever used the Steam Deck's desktop mode, the battery lasts up to like eight hours and it's really actually kind of hard to kill it super quickly. So I've never been out in the wild, like at the park or something where I've used this thing before and run out of battery. It's always come in clutch. The standby time is pretty much indefinite because you just basically turn the thing completely off when you're done using it. And then the battery just sits there pretty much at the charge you left it at, which is great. But yeah, if they make a second hardware revision of this thing, they could essentially perfect it super easily by improving the trackpad, improving the speakers, and just making sure it can output 45 watts of power because I feel like people are really going to attach themselves to this thing once they get their Steam Deck in and they start to think about how they can make it more portable. And you think,
think I'm saving the worst for last year, but honestly, I don't think this thing is too overpriced or expensive at all. It costs $369 directly from the Next Dock site, which is cheaper, but pretty close to the cheapest Steam Deck. But if you add up the price of a decent monitor, a keyboard that has Bluetooth, a mouse that has Bluetooth, and a USB-C hub, you're rapidly approaching two, maybe even $300. And I feel like that $70 difference is made up for by the fact that this is everything you need except for a battery bank all in one device, and it's extremely premium. Like I already mentioned that it's on par in my eyes from a hardware perspective with something like the Asus G14 or the Razer Blade 14. Those are both really high-end aluminum computers with high-end graphics cards in them. But if you combine the price of the Steam Deck, which is around $400 at its cheapest with this thing, which is $369 just out the door, you basically are getting a full-on really powerful laptop experience with two monitors for less than $800. And I don't think you could beat that. Like if you go get a laptop for around that price, you're not going to get the quality of something like a full aluminum chassis or a great keyboard or a 1080p screen that has touch and looks really good. So I can't sit here and claim to be completely unbiased because I didn't actually pay for this product, but I'm telling you right now, I'm pretty good at being objective with stuff like this because if I don't like something, I'm just gonna come out and say it. And this thing really impressed me. I have used it so much over the past couple weeks that I've killed the battery multiple times. It's basically always plugged in and ready to go. So it sits in my backpack when I go to work. I will not leave home without this device. It is basically essential for the Steam Deck. So if you have a Steam Deck pre-ordered and you have a Samsung phone, I would recommend just picking one up now and using it with Dex until your Steam Deck comes in. And if you have a Steam Deck and you're looking for all these accessories like a keyboard, mouse, monitor, USB-C hub, all this extra stuff, really take a look at the Next Dock 360. I think it's going to do a lot of the stuff you want for around the same price, if not just slightly more.